Hey everyone, it's Notorious KIA. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I promise you'll really enjoy it over here, so get comfy. So today's video is a concept that I've been subconsciously working on since I began thrifting, so about 10 years ago, yes. Thrift is life, I'm true to this. So if you're watching this video, you're either a thrifter or you wanna get into thrifting and something that might be holding you back from thrifting is sizing. I know it's a huge bummer, but what are sizes? Like sizes is somebody trying to put you in a box and we don't do boxes over here, okay? When I go to the thrift store, I never ever look at sizing because I know if I like something, I can kind of rework it or finagle it to kind of fit my body. I know the lifelong thrifters out there can feel me. Um, you just rarely ever find garments that fit you true to size in a thrift store. So you kind of like have to, you know, maneuver, finagle, and just do some, you know, magic on it, okay? So for today's video, I'm gonna give you guys some tips on how I rework and resize pieces from the thrift store. Uh, it varies from super, super easy, super simple, to a little bit more difficult. You don't necessarily need a sewing machine, but it will make your life a lot more easier. Trust me when I say this. Um, so yeah guys, without further ado, let's hop right into this video. Okay, so tip number one is adding additional holes to belts, handbags, shoes, and watches. So we'll be using a hole puncher. We're not gonna use scissors anymore, kids, okay? So this is honestly the best tool ever created. I'm also gonna add additional holes to this handbag, turning it into a belt bag slash fanny pack. Like how clutch is that? Pun intended, we stand a versatile piece. We do, don't we? Moving right along to tip number two, another super easy tip. Um, to make extra large shirts a bit more fitted. I start by first rolling up the sleeves. Then I tie it in the front and that's it. Super easy, right? I also like to turn extra large shirts into dresses if they're long enough. Yeah. So tip number three is probably the one that I use the most often and that's belts. You can pretty much belt anything. They're truly a lifesaver. First up, we have blazers, my favorite item to thrift. First things first, I snatch those shoulder pads right out. Um, if that's the look you're going for, cool, but I find that it just looks too boxy and dated most times. Next, I roll up the sleeves, which makes it a little bit more fitted yet relaxed. Um, you can wear it open like this, or you can belt it for another option, another versatile piece. Next up for jumpsuits and dresses, I simply just wrap the belt around my waist, making sure it's tight enough to cinch in the waist, which creates a flattering silhouette. Next up for pants and shorts, I pretty much just take the belt and loop it just through the back loop. This helps the belt stay in place and then I just fasten it how I normally would in the front, adjust the waist and then you're good to go. Lastly, we have skirts. This method works best with really flowy skirts. 
Um, if the skirt is super big like this one, I first like to fold the skirt creating a wrap-like effect. And then I secure it with a bobby pin, bobby pin, safety pin. <laughs> I mean, you could try a bobby pin, girl. Let me know if that works. Uh, you can leave it like this, but to make it look a little bit more neat and seamless, I throw a belt on it. So tip number four is where we show off our sewing skills or lack thereof. <laughs> it's helpful if you have someone to pin the garment for you, but if you don't have anyone available, please stay tuned because the next tip will be for you. But for this one, when the person is pinning, try to make sure that they're not pinning too tight. You wanna give yourself some room for mistakes. Remember, you can always go back and sew some more if it's too big, but you can't get that fabric back once it's gone. So once you're all pinned up, you wanna remove the garment, please be careful of the pins, um, and then you wanna take uh, some chalk or a washable marker and just connect the pins. Um, this creates a guide so it's just a lot easier to sew. Obviously at this point, you can hand sew this part if you don't own a sewing machine, but I'll be using my sewing machine, which I love and it's great for beginners, by the way. I'll be sure to link it down below in the description box, so make sure you guys check that out. So I really wanna emphasize that I'm not Yves Saint Laurent, I'm not Tom Ford, I didn't study at Parsons, you know, so I'm not classically trained, and you know, technically, I'm sure these methods aren't right, <laughs> but they work for me. Um, I'm pretty much like 100% self-taught, and you know, I wouldn't be doing my job if I just didn't share my knowledge with you guys. But obviously, if you know a better way, a more effective way, um, then do it. Uh, you wanna really find a method that works for you. And you know, I, you know, it's not gonna be perfect, you know? But practice makes perfect, okay? <laughs> so once you're done, you wanna try it on and make sure you're satisfied. And then you wanna cut off the excess fabric. I typically leave about a half inch outside the seam and that's it. Not 100% perfect, but I'm satisfied. So lastly, we're at tip number five. We're gonna be using a similar garment as a guide. So this is good if you don't have anybody around to pin or you just don't feel like dealing with other people and you, know, you just wanna be self-sufficient. I feel you and I'm here for it, okay? Uh, so today I'm gonna be baking this pencil skirt smaller. I took the liberty of removing the lining already. Um, I know it serves a purpose, but not today, girl, because it's so annoying when I'm so sewing, so the lining had to go. So next I lay the garment flat. If it has a zipper in the back, I make sure the zipper is facing up. And then I take my similar garment and lay it directly on top. I wanna make sure that I line up the waist and also wanna make sure that both sides are as even as possible. I don't really pay attention to the length because lengths vary and I'm not really, you know, I'm not hemming it. Um, I'm just taking in the sides. Next I take some chalk and I trace along the garment. Feel free to pin both pieces together before you trace. It'll kind of like keep it, you know, from moving around. But, you know, I like the freehand stuff. You know, I like to play on the edge a little bit. Then I go back and pin both sides of the garment along the outline. Next up, it's time to sew. Once again, you can hand sew if you don't have a sewing machine or if you just don't feel like using it. I don't know why, it would make your life a whole lot easier, but you know, we all have choices in life and you chose that, okay? No judgment zone over here. So I just wanna mention that these two sewing methods um, that I showed you guys work best um, when the garment doesn't have pockets. Pockets create a whole nother issue that I personally haven't tackled yet, but definitely stay tuned. Um, so both methods can be done on dresses, on skirts, on shorts, on pants. Yeah. 
Once again, before cutting off the excess fabric, you want to make sure you try it on, make sure you're satisfied. You know, always do less because you can always go back and do more. You can't get that fabric back once it's gone, kids, all right? guys thank you so much for watching don't forget to thumbs up if you enjoyed it and found it helpful it really helps my channel if you made it through this whole entire video without subscribing like seriously I'm judging you what are you doing with your life hit that subscribe button join the club turn in, turn your notifications on as well so you'll never miss an upload thank you again guys and I'll see you in my next video so until next time peace and dopeness